speak about sleep and the importance of sleep and I think um, we'll sort of start the conversation with a bit of a scientific fact and that is that sleep is m more important than dieting and exercise combined mm -hmm. and I think when we put that into perspective that in and of itself speaks about the importance of sleep now many people struggle with sleep uh, my girlfriend struggles I know you're gonna speak about your own experience with sleep and and I think let's actually just start there. Tell me what's your relationship like right now with sleep? So I can sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can sleep a lot. <laughs> so I can sleep at like 10 at night. So this is weekends. I can sleep at 10 at night and I can wake up at 11 the next day. So that's 13 hours of sleep. Jeez. And I can feel that. I can still feel super tired when I wake up. Not refreshed and just like, oh, like did I really even get enough sleep? Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> and they say that you're supposed to, for adults, you're supposed to be getting between seven and nine hours every night. Yeah. So getting seven hours in the week it doesn't affect it. So normally in the week, it's about maybe about eight hours, like good eight hours. But still, so I, I don't get it. Like the research is saying seven to nine hours. But then the Fitbit, I don't know if that's the thing that's lying to me. It says that I don't get deep sleep. Yeah. And it yeah. says I wake up. 45 minutes in the middle of the night and I can't account for 45 minutes. I don't remember this. <laughs> and I think that's very, it's very interesting because, you know, when I think, think of uh, my, my girlfriend, um, she also, she can sleep. Eh? Um, you give her a, a, an opportunity to sleep and she will sleep. The one day we were asked on a bench and she somehow doze off on the bench and I'm like, how do you sleep on a bench, a solid plank, how do you sleep on that? And yet she was able to do so. Um, and yet, even if she were to sleep for such, for such a long time or frequently, she still feels as if she could sleep some more. And so there's obviously um, a missing piece there. there. There seems to be this lack of deep quality sleep. Mm -hmm. And today I want to speak about um, the science behind it and more so how it relates to um, what we can do to change the way that we sleep. So, um, very simply, um, let's start off with how s sleep can actually be detrimental in not just um, us feeling tired, but our livelihood, our health. Um, and so, you know, we've been doing a bit of research on it and um, the science is very clear yeah. as to what's going on. So, if, um, we'll sort of add in as we go along but what's the number one thing that you've come across mm. with the research and um, that shows that sleeping um, could cause a certain ailment like what's that thing that's been an eye-opener for you so for me it was the the reasoning and the memory consolidation so if you're having good quality sleep you remember better and you make better decisions and to, to tie in with this i thought of a friend of mine yeah so she was sleep deprived after her dad passed away. Okay. And her decision making was terribly poor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And funny story. So recently she had an incident where she didn't sleep. She took a sleeping tablet and she didn't sleep with the sleeping tablet. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't remember what happened after that. But she drove to the mall. Apparently she almost went off the road. Okay. She doesn't remember who she was with. <laughs> and so that just shows that this instant lack of sleep when you're supposed to be sleeping when you're tired makes you do things that are not responsible yes so the research that we i did before this incident with her i told her whenever you don't have a good night's rest or when you don't get your sleep period like any type of sleep any couple of hours at night if she doesn't get her sleep her decision making is terrible the next day like poor like completely poor and to me that's what's important is mm. and the research well tied in with that. So to me, decision making and to remember anything, that is why sleep is important uh, Absolutely. For me. So my experience as well, I remember I was actually, I did my undergrad in sports psychology and one of the things they always said was, um, in order to um, retain memory and to remember, no, remember, we study. Mm. And so they, uh, one of the lecturers actually said, you need to have a good night rest. And then I actually saw it come up in our lecture notes and that was the number one thing that I cling on to. And so 
when I was studying, I always made sure I didn't care if I didn't cover everything. I'd rather not cover everything than have a good night rest than just scram, scram, scram and not sleep at all because that is the one thing that my teacher, lecturer told me. And I must say, I think it did serve me um, quite a bit. I think, um, you know, I did decently. Um, and uh, yeah, so I definitely would agree with you with that. And um, was there anything else um, that sort of was quite... Uh, an eye opener for you. So the research was also showing that um, blue light with the phone. So they say between one and three hours before you sleep, you should switch off your phone, not go, not, not be in a place where there's very bright light, even your bedroom lights are like white light. So rather start dimming the lights from about, they say six o'clock because at about nine ish, melatonin kicks in and that's when you start feeling sleepy and then you should be getting ready to sleep. Mm. So, yeah, for me, that was the other big thing is that the bright light, the white light, the blue light, the yeah. very bright light. And it's that, circadian rhythm. <laughs> that's it. And how does that even, like a lot of people think it's just about light. The light represents so much more than that. It represents the sun. Back in the day when we were hunting and gatherers, we were sort of in rhythm with the sun. We were in rhythm with the moon. And, you know, when the, when the sun when sun would rise, it would then immediately um, increase our cortisol level, decrease in a melatonin level, and that will get us to um, become less sleepy and become in that be, be wakeful state. And so there's a reason why they say no light at all, or very, um, no, no light, no not light. even some light, no light. No, is it, they say no light. <laughs> Absolutely no light. So there's a reason for that. They also did a study um, and there was a study done and they took a, a light the size of about a five rand coin right. and they put it behind someone's knee. Now, if you were to put a light beside, uh, behind someone's knee, you're not going to see the light. You, you, know, the, you won't be able to physically see the light because the light is behind someone's knee. But that was enough to disturb someone's sleep. Mm -hmm. And they're showing the reason for that is we have photoreceptors in our skin. And so even though you're not physically seeing it with your eye, the fact that your skin is receiving that light mm -hmm. sends signals to the brain saying that it is now daytime. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, no light, whether it is the TV, um, TV screen, whether it's your cell phone, whether it is a, a, a lamp, or even if it's a dim lamp, whatever it is, there should be no light at all. And one of the bigger ones is blue and white. And those are, those are the two major ones. But if you can just eliminate all forms of light, I think it'll be important. Yeah, and the other thing they said is trying, every, every, trying to go to bed early, earlier every night so you have a good night's rest, which I find so difficult. Mm. Like, how do you go back to bed earlier when you have things to do? <laughs> like, you try, but it doesn't work. Because then, you, where do you find time to, to rest? Like to relax. Yeah. And then where do you find time to sleep also? Yeah. And yeah. sleeping is relaxing, but like to unwind, to watch series. Correct. And then you have to account for like one hour, three hours, two, one to three hours. So yeah, where do you find the time? <laughs> that is difficult. And I think the reason why the science says that you should sleep slightly earlier is because uh, melatonin actually gets released mm -hmm. uh, between 10, the most 10 o'clock and then 2 a.m. 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning and so if you sleep in 2 a.m. in the morning <laughs> sorry so if you if you are sleeping slightly later um, you are actually shorting yourself of that melatonin secretion um, another thing is it's what we're doing most of us before bed we're on our phone um, oh. and that and the research Netflix. has <laughs> Netflix and chill um, and they've shown that has also an averse uh, response or reaction to our bedtime. Now, they've shown if you an hour on your phone, that is enough to cut your deep sleep by 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you an hour on your phone before you go to bed at night, you are already taking away 30 minutes of deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And so having a curfew, not going to at least um, getting rid of your phone an hour before you go to bed um, will be very, very important. So. Sleeping early is quite important, but making sure that you managing your cell phone um, contact time is going to be even more more important. There's a couple of other things actually. Now yeah. I'm thinking it was 
the coffee, drinking caffeine yes, drinks, yes. and doing mentally intense activities. So I can remember when I was at university and in school, you know, the night before an exam and you're cramming <laughs> yeah. and you're studying and you're going and climb in bed. You start remembering, you start dreaming about what you were studying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yes. that, that, no, that's when I thought of the whole mentally intense activities because you're literally sitting, you're doing, a, you, you're doing math class papers and you're really using your brain. And the next thing you're like, okay, it's time, I need to go sleep. And then you just close up and you're in the bed. You haven't really relaxed or unwound yes. or forgot about what it is. And that's why you dream of it and you don't really have that restful sleep. So that's why they're saying that also before bedtime, doing something more relaxing, something more calming, like right. um, breathing or, the, or reading a book or yeah. something to just calm the mind. Absolutely. And you know, what you lead into is your psychological state before you go to bed and if you it's this is not rocket science if you are stressed out before you go to bed are you going to have a good night's sleep no. most probably not and it's because your mind is so focused on the problem or on this thing that you're needing to resolve yes. and so it's quite important to go to bed with solving all your, all your problems or ex just having this f sense of acceptance of okay there's nothing more i can do i'm now going to have a good night rest mm -hmm. so your mental state yes. is so important now actually i love that you brought that up because i have a feeling with all the research that's been done you know they say like like you've mentioned you know mm -hmm. if you're doing difficult or more mental tasks before bed um it's going to cause you to uh, have a, a poor night rest I feel emotionally, yes. if people have emotional turmoil, um, not just before bed, throughout the day, they've went through a, quite a hectic crisis, whatever it is, or they have um, a depression, whatever it is, that will impact the way that you sleep. 90% of people have depression say that they uh, have poor sleeping habits. Cool. And so there's an emotional link to sleeping poorly. Now, the best thing that one can do is to resolve your emotional turmoil, but it's easier said than done. True. And so I would suggest that people do a bit of breathing, do a bit of journaling, mm. write out the problems that you have. Because the moment you put pen to paper and you write it out, there's a physical release. You are essentially releasing, getting rid of all this heaviness that you have with inside of yourself. And I would say those would be the two major things just get rid of it, release it. So if you have an issue at home or not at home, wherever, and you need to get rid of it, write down, breathe, meditate, do mm -hmm. something but release it because that will have a direct impact on the way that you sleep. And you sort of mentioned caffeine as well. Yeah. And so caffeine and melatonin are Copy indirectly uh, proportional, meaning if you increase the one, the other one goes down. If you increase the other one, the other one goes up. Yeah. And so the more caffeine you have, um, particularly before bed, um, the likely are you to, for you to have a poor night rest. Now, that includes tea. Tea has tea a lot as of well. caffeine. Because I notice, okay, I'm weird. I can have coffee and I can sleep with coffee, but I can, if I have tea, I can't sleep. So the other night, my mom came home and I had a cup of tea with her and I had the worst sleep. Because yeah. I couldn't sleep, because I couldn't fall asleep, because I had so much of energy. Yeah. So, yes. So yeah. the research it's good to test out the research also <laughs> by drinking tea and see what happens. And you're right, because I know a lot of people, I mean a friend of mine, Jamie, he can literally drink literally a cup of coffee and go right to bed directly after. Where with me, if I drink a cup of coffee, I, I am buzzing. <laughs> I, I think I'm just um it's quite st I'm easily stimulated. Yes. Um and so um but some people can and some people can't. But the issue is the stimulation even though you might go to bed quite easily are you having a deep enough sleep that that is the question definitely not you know and i think just being mindful and truthful and asking ah, is that the case for you now caffeine has about a the minute you consume it it has a six hour lifespan and mm. um, within the body so it will so the, it's effects it will linger on for, for at least six more hours in the body um, and so which which is quite significant um, so if you are stimulant sensitive, I would say six hours before you go to bed, <laughs> that will be me. I would yeah. have to have six, uh, a coffee six hours before I go to bed just so I have a good enough rest. Um, but yeah, that was also quite an quite a interesting one. Is there anything else that comes to mind for you? No, then um, does the 
the things that you could do to have a good night's rest. So, like we said, limiting the screen time, no drinking of caffeine drinks, the noise. Noise was another one, and light. Right, yeah. yeah. And then I know... Um, we oh, and heat. heat. The temperature. Oh, temperature. the bottles <laughs> speak about temperature yes. now. Um, and is there any particular... Um, is there anything that you want to talk on that about? Yeah, you know, if it's too hot, you I mean, cannot you, sleep. You have, That's you had an experience. You that had was experience this week, recently, yeah. It's been so hot. I mean, I can't, I can't deal with the heat. I'm, so, I'm somebody that feels cold in summer, so I need a blanket. But if I'm throwing a blanket off, it means it's really hot. Yeah. And I needed the fan on the whole night. So last night we put the fan on for the entire night, and I had a good night's rest. But the other two nights where I didn't have the fan on and I had my, still my fluffy blanket like it's winter because I think I'm feeling cold, yeah. I had a, the, the most terrible sleep. Because in the middle of the night, that's when you know, it's so hot, I need to throw off a blanket, I need to, I need to still rearrange and then you try and find a pillow that was between your legs and yeah. <laughs> you can't find where your things are. So you're breaking your sleep. So yes, the good temperature. They say a cooler temperature to sleep with. So yeah. even in winter, it shouldn't be so cold where you're freezing, but it shouldn't be so warm where you, where, where it's uncomfortable. Yes. I think yes. they say the degree, the, the temperature reading is supposed to be about 22 degrees. Yeah. They say that's a good temperature Plus to be minus, sleeping. Plus yeah. And you're right. Um, now there are devices that you can use to cool the body, but you don't need that. Mm. Um, you can just use like a fan or, you know, the only issue is that fans are quite noisy. Yes, I would. Um, so that will be a bit counterintuitive. But there's a thing called the chili pad and it's exactly like electric heat, uh, electric blanket, but just does the opposite. Mm. Now, there's something that's quite interesting that, um, you know, doing research on this mm. um, and the science shows outright uh, that a poor night rest can cause obesity. Yes. And the reason for this is, you know, when you have a poor night rest, um, there's a hormone called ghrelin, mm -hmm. um, which is the hungry hormone. It is, you know, you, you feel like you just want to eat. And this hormone actually gets stimulated when you are sleep deprived. And I would imagine, and I would like to just imagine this, like if you sleep deprived and you feel a little bit snackish or nibblish, do you feel like, um, you want to eat like a broccoli late hours <laughs> of the morning or do you want to eat like something sugary or something something deep fried and smothered in chocolate <laughs> you know what I mean so that's exactly it and so you tend to go for the sugary stuff and 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 there's a reason for that and um, when you're in that state sleep deprived you're actually in this fight and flight response mm. and so fight and flight means you need quick sugar something to burn quickly and but you eat and you go to bed and you're not actually burning it. Mm. And so that becomes the issue. And so you build or you add a lot more uh, weight and hence uh, you become overweight. And, and so there's another sort of reason um, and, that, and that in the interim would also cause diabetes. Yes. So see people that are sleep deprived will have uh, eventually some form of um, glucose or um, insulin issue um, which will then cause diabetes and they were also at risk for having cardiovascular disease yeah. which is another one and the reason is when you before when you go to bed and you're in that deep sleep your heart rate actually lowers down as well as your blood pressure if you are sleep deprived your heart rate and blood pressure remains elevated mm -hmm. and you can imagine how much your heart has to work over time mm. and as a result your heart becomes weaker and so forth so that working of the heart uh, too much uh, would also cause the cardiovascular disease there's also the thing they were saying about eating before bedtime so that means while you're sleeping your body is busy digesting food so it's not resting so that's why they say that you should be eating I think they said it was five hours before before bedtime. Mm. So if you sleep at say 10 a.m., I mean 10 p.m., <laughs> you should be having supper by like five, six, the latest. Yeah. So that your body has time to break down all the food that you've eaten so that when you go to bed, your organs are resting, your body is resting, it's able to re regenerate its cells and yeah. repair itself. Because eating, you, your body is, your, imagine your digestive system is working while you're sleeping. 
So that's not resting. And then when you wake up, you're going to eat again. Yeah. And it's going to work again. And it's going to continue working for the next whole day. So Correct. that was the other thing I was thinking of now when you're speaking about the hunger hormones and um, sleeping and yeah. in relation to sleep. And that's a very important point is making scheduling your eating in relation to your sleep. So I think five hours, that's definitely one of the recommendations, but some people won't be able to do that. I think that's just too extreme for a lot of people. And so two to three hours, if they can at least do that, yeah. I think that'll also be, um, that'll be, be quite beneficial. And then also like people are quite snackish. Um, and so they, they always say like, <laughs> how could I work around that? And you can work around that. The big issue is, just don't go for the sugary stuff again. Mm -hmm. Don't go for the processed stuff. Go for the lot more, um, the healthy route, the, your, um, your simple, not your, I was about to say your simple carbs, definitely yeah. not your simple carbs, but your, your lot more organic stuff. Yes. And that's gonna be a lot more better for you if you are feeling quite snackish. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was another interesting sort of insight that came up and they've shown that, um, being sleep deprived, linking to um, cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. um, working night shifts yes. is actually classified as a, um, could lead to um, cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease. disease. Well. So and saying. again, it speaks about being sleep deprived. And also people that travel a lot because of the time zones that you're tra tra traveling across. So your circadian rhythm goes out of sync. Because you could be traveling from, say, I don't even know where to go. Where it would be, where it would be nighttime right now. But yeah. going from where it's daytime, where you normally stay, to a place where it's night, and your entire rhythm is out. Yeah. Because your your hormones are influenced by light. So, like you were explaining about yeah. photoreceptors. So your body doesn't know what to do. So that's how comes the whole jet lag and all of that comes into play. Yeah. So people that travel a lot also struggle with. Um, with sleep issues because of that. Yeah, uh, and you're right. I think like, it, it's it's all of these things that we, we have to work around and you have to be more mindful of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't expect everyone to make all these changes that we're saying, but start somewhere. You know, can you um, lower the temperature at night? Can you maybe not eat um, as close to your bedtime? Um, can you maybe, you know, it's just add in something um, or take out phone. something or not use your phone, but just start somewhere. And, you know, they've also shown that um, how sleep deprivation causes a decrease in, in your immune system. Mm -hmm. um, and that is actually, it just makes also intuitive sense when you are tired and wired and you, you know, you're not your usual self, you're more prone to get the, um, it's uh, for some form of infections, viruses, bacteria, mm -hmm. and, and that was me. That was me, uh, COVID, you know, my body was just tired. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt like I just needed a bit of a break and I got yeah. COVID, <laughs> I actually got COVID. Um, and so there's a definite link between being sleep deprived as well as your immune system. Mm -hmm. Now, We've mentioned some of the things that, that, they, that we can do to improve our sleep. I think the biggest one that I've noticed that people don't do and, you know, is definitely trying to eliminate your cell phone um, contact screen time. Mm -hmm. And that's a, quite a big one. Um, and people are addicted to their phones. Yes. I agree. They, they can't do without their phone. <laughs> they really can't. And so I would say, if that's the case, rather replace that with reading of a novel or something that is not as immensely taxing, but is, um, you know, you're still doing something. Like knitting. Knitting. Do you know what's even a better one? To connect with your family during that yes. time. Speak to your loved one. Um, you know, just develop and connect. There was also another study done, and this is very interesting. Yeah. So they've shown that and uh, people who have, and this is slightly off topic, but it yeah. just drives the point. People who have TVs in their room, they yeah. are, and this is couples, they are 50% less likely to have intercourse. Really? 50%. Yeah. 
which speaks about connection. Mm. And so your TV screen, your screen time has a direct influence, on not just your connection with your loved ones, mm. but also your sleeping. And so I think if we could, you know, just limit our screen time, that would be fantastic. And then you could also use, there's apps now on your phone, and there's an app for Android called Flux that you could use to decrease your um, blue light um, mm. um, um, being um, on, your phone. on your phone. There's uh, an app on the Apple iPhone that you could use to also help with that. Mm. So there are ways to do it, but I would say eliminate it completely. Yeah. The second one is we live in stressful times and so people are very stressed. If we can manage our stress, yes. And I say manage, I mean actually deal with it. Don't just manage it and sweep it under the carpet, actually deal with it. Yes. And say, so this is where I'm at, this is what needs to be done. Journal, like I've mentioned, meditate, breathe, but do something about it. I think that's a, even a better one um, for most people because people during this time in particular, we are mm. stressed. We are. Uh, it's not just as a country, but as a world, uh, as a humanity, we are quite stressed. We are. As we're talking, I hope people are sort of relating to certain things that resonate with them because mm. you know it could be more of the emotional thing that people are re resonating with or it could be you know it could be my phone or it could be the tv mm. or it could be the light that's coming in that shouldn't be there or it could be that it's actually too hot whatever it is that resonates with you i think you start there and you eliminate those things if it's the eating the snacking whatever it is but start somewhere mm -hmm. and then from there notice how the body changes notice how you feel because i think that'll be um the best motivation the minute you notice that you are sleeping better you're going to want to do more of that cool. and you're going to want to add in more to get a better night rest so and um, yeah um i think that's that's the way forward